I'm Dean Gearhart. Grew up near Long Lane, which is between Shady Grove and Green Castle. And my parents, my father was a teacher, preacher, and um, there was five of us, children. I had an older brother, and the rest of them, they're all younger than me, girls, two girls, and, and a real young brother. Grew up on the farm as well. Went to a two-room school with wooden floors and spent the first eight years in two rooms. Had to take a test to go into high school. Then after that, took a test to get into college. After I was in college for four years to become a teacher, had to take a test to, become, to get into the master's program. So I became a school teacher and settled down here on one of our other farms and my wife and I, we raised a family. We had four children, two boys and two girls. We now have 10 grandchildren and we love them all. And um, so now we're starting to get great grandchildren. That tells me I must be getting up in years a little bit. Oh well. I started teaching in 1961. Taught till 1997, 36 years. And I've been substituting ever since. So that's been about 21 years now. I love going into school, substituting. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy the students, mostly middle and high school. I do a little farming on the side. Now I'm down to the most of it's all rented out and I do a little custom combining. So I try to keep after things. We do a lot of small chores around the place. We have a nice garden and, um, and we, we take some trips once in a while. It's nice to travel. We used to have a motor home. Now we, uh, we take bus trips. I'm getting pretty old. To, do much driving anymore so so basically that's where I'm at so well to tell the truth I grew up on the farm and I thought I'd want to be a farmer and my father always took us up to to horseshoe curve to see the trains going around on the curve and in those days there was a lot of steam locomotives and they had double headers on the front and sometimes pushers in the back and always like that. And I thought, I, become, I want to become an engineer. Well, then one day, about the time I was in 11th grade, my father asked me to go to Shippensburg to take the entrance exam. I about fell through the floor because that wasn't what I wanted to be. But I always listened to my father, so I decided to go took the entrance exam and I thought I didn't know too much, but anyhow, they accepted me. So that's how I started out. And when I first uh, got into where we went into classrooms our sophomore and junior year, I thought, this is pretty nice. And then, of course, I got into to, uh, student teaching and I really liked it. So now I'm glad I went into teaching. And I still do a little farming. And I have a room full of trains too, so <laughs> that's how I got into that. My favorite thing is students. I enjoy the students. I like to have fun with them, make it as enjoyable as I can. And some of my most favorite subjects is math and history. So I would tell an awful lot of history stories. And eventually, I fifth grade, we we took historical trips, went to Sino Canal, and I went to Antietam, and eventually the man who led us around there in Antietam, I, I took notes, and don't you know, he passed away. So I decided, I know enough of stories, I'm gonna take them myself. So I took them to our retirement. Yep, so I, that's, that's some of my most favorite things, and I, enjoyed doing things with them, we'd have a lot of fun. If the kids were good, I'd say, well, we're going to go out and pay, play a little kickball at the end of the day. So the kids, 
they loved it, and I loved them. So today in substituting, I tell them, if you're good, we'll sing. So they like to sing a little. So I said, if you're good, we'll sing at the end of the period. That's what I did. We'd sing a couple little, couple little songs. I guess because I knew so many students and knew so many people as I grew up, and then I had some of their children, and I had some of their grandchildren yet, so they all knew me for some reason. I can't go anywhere without somebody not, not knowing me been there. So if I go into the old home week or something like that, it seems like everybody knows me. <laughs> so it's, it gets around. Some of my favorite hobbies, well, um, I do enjoy a lot of chores around the place like mowing the yard and stuff. So we we got some good Z turn mowers and we'd have a ball and we used to blink lights at each other and stuff like that. So I guess if you call it a hobby, I sort of, it's enjoyable. And uh, I enjoy custom combining as long as the thing don't break down. And of course, some of my hobbies was going on trips and stuff and going to see trains, riding trains somewhere. And um, and I love my little model trains. I have a lot of HO gauge trains. And I like to play with them and get the kids, the grandkids up there. And I don't know, they want to see the trains run and stuff like that. Yep. Life is enjoyable. You put into it what you get out of it. I mean, you get out of what you put into it. <laughs> so, yeah, <clears throat> I enjoy people. I like to be among people, especially children and young people. So, that's why I like to substitute and go in, see what's going on. And the first thing I see, I hear some of them saying, "Here comes Mr. Gearhart. Can we sing today?" <laughs> so uh, stuff like that I, I do enjoy it yep. enjoy life each step of the way each day I go in there on Monday mornings and whistling around and chatting with some of them and I say well what would you have for breakfast this morning? nothing well you wonder what I had? I had pancakes peanut butter marshmallow Another pancake on that, and then put syrup on that. And their eyes get big, and they say, how can you eat all that? I said, I'm used to always eating a big breakfast, and I love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I tell them, do your best. Sit up straight. Try to, try to enjoy life and, and uh, get into hobbies. Enjoy your hobbies and go for it. Sing as you can, whistle, and so on. In fact... I'm starting to whistle with them now. I tell them, okay, if you're good, we're gonna whistle today. I had a classroom one time and uh, they, the, the management told me to, hey, um, we're short on substitute, substitutes. Can you take a couple double classes? I said, well, I'll try, sure. In fact, when I first started teaching, I had as many as 40 in my class. So they had about 39 coming in there, and I said, no problem. So after they were all pretty well done, and I told them, I said, since we have so many, we're going to whistle today. So we would whistle a, 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 a tune, and I'd tell them that as many as possible can whistle that tune, whistle it. And they would all try to do that, except for the ones that can't do anything whistling. I said, that's okay, Ray. Now we're going to whistle, dashing through the snow. And boy, they would all start whistling, and a lot of them looked around and said, well, I didn't know they could whistle. I didn't know who so-and-so could whistle. And the first thing, everybody was having a good time. So I just enjoy doing those kind of things and tell them to enjoy life. My words of wisdom is enjoy each step and smile where you can. A smile is quite a funny thing. It wrinkles up your face. And when it's gone, you never seem to find its secret hiding place. But far more wonderful it is to see what smiles can do. You smile at one, he smiles at you, and so one smile makes two. And since a smile can do great good by cheering hearts of care, let's smile and smile and not forget that smiles go everywhere. <laughs>